Hey guys, Joshua Godamo here, and this is time for another Gundam review. Now, our background's a little different today. It's my work table for Gundam Father of Peace, where I build customs and mess around with stuff. As a, a secret animation is underway on our main set, so I can't show it to you. Wahahaha. <laughs> Anyways, our review today is the Advanced MSIA Buster Gundam. I've never owned an advanced MSIA before, and I just pulled this out of a box from a trade from my friend Grimlock64. Why is Grimlock64 awesome? Well, first off, he's a major leader in the MSIA community. He's got all kinds of Gundam MSIA, has good reviews, and um, he's traded with me several times. And uh, he's a great trader, so this is also a thank you video to him. Now, he reviewed this figure. And by his own words, um, said it was it was pretty bad. The funny thing about the advanced MSIA is that they're pretty hard to find, especially for a reasonable price. You can find them new in the box on eBay fairly easy. They're like fifty bucks, and that's insane. And they're not something that you can usually, you know, find pretty easily. And so I haven't got some one yet. And I've always wanted one because the armor comes off and stuff. And they sound pretty cool. So, we're going to take a look at it and see just how bad it is. Is it worth the money? Is it not? I'm looking at it for the first time, so let's go through this figure. First off, things I notice is that the armor comes off, just like I heard. And so, uh, you know, you kind of have to piece it together, a little bit like a model kit. But not difficult. Well, I'm not the model kit guy, mostly because they're very fragile. And uh, I'd rather play with it than build it. That's me. A lot of people really love building them. And uh, I have great respect for the hobby. It's just, uh, you know, I like just to rip mine out of the package and start playing with it. But as you can see, there's some, some cool detail there. Armor pops right on. Ah! Well, I tried to shake him to show how well the armor stays on. And his uh, butt flap just flew off, so... It stays on okay. Stays on okay. So it passes that test. Now, this guy's a fair amount bigger than the normal MSIA. I actually, uh, all my busters are in parts because I took parts from them for Oxal Gundams, my uh, main unit for my Stop Motion Animation series. Oops. His butt fin, fin, butt cover came back off again. How embarrassing. On public video, no less. But uh, here's the blue frame MSIA, Japanese. And um, should be about the same size as the Buster MSIA. But as you can see, this guy is a fair amount taller. Let's see there. Quite a difference in size. Grab the Oxal Gundam to compare the shoulders real quick. Here's the... Uh, now they're slightly repainted, but Dual Gundam's shoulders from the MSA version. There's quite a size difference there, as you can see. Not, not very compatible with the MSA version 1, or with the regular MSA. So, that's one of my observations. The color scheme is different. It's kind of a, a lighter color instead of a, a light brown. It's more off-white. It's interesting. It's interesting. The waist doesn't turn. Huh. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Sucky point one. Waist does not turn. Not even a smidge. Solid. Comes with two closed fists and apparently two gun hands. This guy comes with no melee weapons. Looks like um, this is his shoulder or his side armor. Allows the guns to go on there. And he would hold them however he holds them. I've always had trouble, even with the MSA version, making him hold his weapons. And I saw Grimlock try several times in his video to figure out how he, how these work. They're not on a ball peg. That's something he pointed out. It's just on that little nub there. Seeing this thing isn't going to stay all that great. But yeah, you can kind of get the idea of how he'd hold stuff reasonably still a cool figure I mean pretty cool 
But the off scale and the waist not turning, eh, you know. Just trying to decide if this figure is really worth what he sells for on eBay. What his compatriots sell for. Alright, so we've got our weapons down. Those kind of get in the way. These don't really seem to fold up very well. They don't seem to really go away. Now there's a chance that I have them backwards. Let's uh, assume that I do. I'll try it the other way. Still, I mean, that's kind of in the way. You know what I mean? That's, that's, I probably had them backwards at first. So, so I never, never even picked this figure up before. Still, kind of in the way there. The MSI is folded up pretty nice. They fold it up into the backpack or something like that. But these definitely do not. I guess we can, it's about the best we can get. Kind of really limits his flexibility. He does have nice flexibility in the arms, though. It's pretty nice. His uh, knee just fell off. Head. Let's check out the head. The head seems to be on a ball joint. He's a bit stiff at turning side to side. Looks up and down fine. Let's see if these open. They do. However, you see that detail in there? See that detail in there? Now, which do you like better? The advanced MSA or the MSAA, missile-wise? I think I like the MSAA version myself. They're bigger, they're scarier. These are just going, oh yeah, well I got teeny tiny missiles. Yeah, little missiles. They'll hit you in the eye. Yeah. These are like, I'll freaking blow you up. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> Same six missiles in each. These are a little harder to open. You can see the, the hinge there. The MSI, the hinge seems a little more hidden. I'm just, I'm not really sure what I'm going to... My answer for this figure when we get done reviewing it. I'm just looking at this for the first time. Giving you my impressions. These kind of get in the way. So let's just kind of take those off. Okay. That helps a little bit. But they're still, still in the way. Um, legs. Go that far forwards, that far back. Not very good. Ooh, legs come off. So it seems to be like an MSIA. It's on a ball joint. That's, that's encouraging. Double jointed in the knee. Foot has nice flexibility. Um, these don't move. You'd think they would, but, uh, no, no they don't. Elbow joints is... Uh, double jointed hands on a ball joint that goes in so it gives it nice flexibility. I like that We'd like to do that to the Oxal Gundam someday some more advancements This little thing does not move. It's totally attached Let's See does the backpack come off backpack itself doesn't come off back armor comes off So I think we've covered the flexibility of the figure as best as we can. It's kind of limited I th actually think the uh, the regular MSIA has a bit more flexibility and that skirt armor has a little bit of flex to it and uh, the waist is on a ball joint on the MSIA. So uh, yeah, uh, well, let's take off the armor. I mean, that, that's what we want. We want to see him naked, so, <laughs> well maybe not. But uh, let's see, what does he look like without the armor? The armor's kind of cool looking. You know, I kind of like how the armor comes off. That's a pretty cool feature, really. Got some detail in there. The foot doesn't have any armor that comes off, so it's just solid like that. Let's see. Ah, that's nice. So we got a whole frame here. I suppose there are certain model kits that are built like this. Which is one thing that's pretty cool about model kits. It'd be cool if the MSA had armor that came off. And so, uh, even if with the downsides I've seen of the figure so far, I have to say that this is a noble endeavor. I'm not sure how well I like it yet, functionally wise, but noble endeavor. That's pretty cool. Let's see, how do we take the shoulders off without breaking them? It looks like they're on a ball joint up there, instead of the 
going on and meeting. You know, uh, that's how most of your shoulders go on the MSA. It's a little different. kind of cool. I really like how the armor comes off. I'm not sure if this piece... Yeah, yeah, it does. Cool. Got a whole arm in there. That's pretty neat. Let's see. Huh. Pretty cool. The head armor doesn't come off either. It's much like the foot. But uh, here you go. This is the frame of the MSIA extended. Or not extended, advanced MSIA frame. It's different. What can I say? That's, it's different. I'm not entirely sure how I like it. Um, I guess we're getting, you know, about the 11 minute mark on this video. What do I think of the advanced MSA. Well, I wish that they were the right scale because, you know, to, to someone who just randomly collects Gundam, scale isn't terribly important. But I build whole movie sets for stop motion animation, and I like my figures to be on scale with each other. It's why I pick one line and I mostly just stick with it. Um, I just collect the MSA, not the HCM Pros or anything. Because I, I want them all to be on the same scale as much as humanly possible. But sometimes I make exceptions, like the GM Sniper from the Robot Spirits, or GM Sniper 2. Um, the armor coming off is a noble endeavor. It's very noble. However, it came at losses. Armor tends to fall off. Armor is kind of hard and not soft like the PVC. Uh, kind of reminds me of the... Um, what are they called? Zeography and fixed figurations. Fixed figurations, you could swap the armor and things and make them into different suits. The unfortunate thing about the fixed figurations was they were very breakable. So, I mean, obviously the fixed figurations at their price were not made to be played with, but they weren't even functional playability, if you know what I mean. Like, you couldn't even take off the armor and switch it around and make the, the Mad Rock Gundam without breaking it. Which is lame. I mean, what's the point of making it if you can't switch to switch armor? If you can't switch the armor, these guys seem to have enough durability compared to the fixed figurations to actually switch the armor around. However, I anticipate great frustration if you were trying to play with it; that it will keep falling off. Probably the best way to pose it is to put on half the armor and leave the other half off. The torso body frame seems a bit small. You know, I think that uh, a bit more strength, a bit more could be built into here because I think my giant robot needs a bigger chassis to run, yeah, especially something this big. Uh, he's kind of scrawny in some points, particularly the lower torso. You know, when you take off all the armor, it seems a little weak. You know, if, if this were a giant robot's armor being taken off kind of view. Is it worth the money? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, these guys run about 50 bucks. Grimlock didn't like it at all. He offered it up for trade, so I traded him a hard-to-get G Gundam figure. And uh, he was happy, and I'm, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy to have this figure. I'm hoping to actually pillage parts from it. And uh, see if it'll work with the Oxal Gundam. And here we'll find out. Not a perfect fit. It's going to take some tweaking, as you can see. But uh, we could probably take the Oxal Gundam and uh, put them in a mobile suit hanger. Might not be bright enough out here. That's bright enough. I'm just going to take some tweaking. But that's why I got this figure. So that I can rip them apart and uh, do stuff like that. I don't know if you guys approve, but... It's going to look pretty cool for Gundam Father Peace. But, um, I'm curious. What do you guys think of this figure? I've tried to review him as in-depth as I possibly could. Tried to be honest about his downsides and his upsides. 
leave a comment down below. Tell me what do you think of the advanced MSIA. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.